All right, I'm Dave Ratt, and today let's take a look at which is more dangerous, audio phantom power as supplied by a mixing console, USB power that is supplied by either a laptop or whatever source, a little plug that goes in a wall, or a 9-volt battery. Um, in order to test this, what I've got is a cable here, which is just XLR to bare ends with the phantom power turned on on this console, the little blue light there. And I've got a USB cable stripped down with just the two power wires showing, red and black wire, and a 9-volt battery that's got two clip leads on it. And we're going to do some tests and see which one is more dangerous. Now, phantom power is 48 volts, which is a pretty high voltage. If you consider that wall voltage um, in the United States and many countries is 120 volts. Um, so 48 volts, that's close to half or um, more 40% of what we see from the power in the wall, the voltage in the wall. USB voltage for a standard USB is 5 volts. Now there are other USB voltages on USB-C and there's all kinds of control and stuff, but the generic uh, pretty much run of the mill is 5 volts and there's different amounts of power chargers that have more current. This is a 2 amp charger, 2000 milli, uh, milliamp charger, 2000 milliamps or 2 amps and a 9-volt battery. We're all familiar with that. It puts out 9 volts, and they vary in current a bit. I won't get into that. So let's go ahead and check this out. Let's start with an LED. I've got a huge, big, fat LED here, and uh, let's go ahead and put phantom power to LED. Now, phantom power, actually, of these three, it shows up on three wires instead of just two. Um, the USB has a minus and a plus. The 9-volt battery has a minus and a plus. The phantom power has the ground, or the minus, and two pluses. And the way phantom power works, it puts 48 volts on both of pin 2 and pin 3 of the XLR. So that a microphone will see 48 volts on both sides of it. There's no differential. It's, it doesn't know. There's no The difference in voltage is what causes um, power and things to happen. So... If I was to take the two pluses, the pin two and pin three, and put it on the LED, it will not illuminate because there's no difference in voltage. They both have 48 volts on them. But if I take one of them and attach it, and then take the ground to the other, let me figure out which way it goes, and then we should see the LED illuminate. So let's go ahead and do that, and there we go. And we can see the mixing board is lighting up a little bit because we've got some clip. And there we and since there's two lines, we can actually short those together and get some more power. So let's go ahead and look at 48 volts phantom power. There's both voltages there. And we can see it lights the LED up. Next, let's go ahead and look at what USB power will do. So I'm gonna hook up the ground there and the plus. Uh, I don't have these marked. It only lights up in one direction. And look at that. It lights up almost yellow. That's much brighter than we saw here. Now, let's go ahead and do a 9-volt battery. We'll put that on there, and that's even brighter. Now it's turning orange. It's so bright that it's not even green. This is supposed to be a green LED and when it, when the uh, um, current is so high. So of these three, the 9-volt battery has got the most power. Now, is that dangerous? Um, well, not really. It doesn't seem too dangerous to me. While I was doing this, I was touching the end. How dangerous are these? 48 volts. Let's put this on my hand. I'm going to grab it through my heart. I'm going to put it on my, my hand here. Ooh, I can feel a little bit. 
but not much. I'll put that on my hand here, and we'll put the 9 volt battery on my hand here. Now, water conducts electricity more. So if we put salt water, maybe it would help a little bit with feeling it. All right, so now let's go ahead and move on to a speaker. Put phantom power onto a small speaker and see what it sounds like. Let's see how much juice is coming out. So this is a good way. I mean, we could put a, we could look at these. We know what the voltage is. We calculate the current and those are numbers. But in the real world, how much does that, how much work does it perform? What does it do? How does it affect our real world um, life that we live in? So I'm gonna hook up phantom power speaker. Let's listen. So it pops, but then it goes away. It like, it has one good surge. It's, it's got a lot to give for a second there, and then there's nothing. So there's phantom power. That 48 volts puts out a bunch, and not much follow-up. Let's go ahead and see what USB power does. Wow, so that really, it's got juice and it continues to supply it. Um, all right, for test number three, we'll do a nine volt battery. Seems about the same. Um, I think, I would say it's a tie. You know, I can see the speakers moving. I can see where it's moving to. And it appears that with the 9 volt, it's moving farther. I'd say the 9 volt wins um, on that one as well. So the 9 volt battery is kind of dominating the, the power wars here. Um, here's another speaker. We can check this out. Uh, this one's a higher efficiency, and we should hear more with it. I'm going to awkwardly and cumbersomely I try and connect these. Same thing. And with this, and with the 9 volt battery. Cool. What else can we do? Um, let's see what happens if we connect this up to a very thin wire uh, and see if we can get this wire to burn up. So I'm going to attach this um, clip lead here to the wire and we will start with phantom power. We'll connect this to the phantom power pluses here and we'll connect this to the phantom power ground or minus and then we're going to see if we can get any of these wires to light up now with a very thin wire I can tell that we're connecting because I see that the mixing board is flashing its LEDs and we're not seeing anything Exciting, we can't, we're not melting any wire with that. Let's try the USB. So we'll hook this up here. It's kind of nice to bring this stuff into perspective. These are common things that we run into. Are they dangerous? Is phantom power really dangerous? Or is it um, no big deal? And you know, what does it affect? Okay, so now we're hooked up to USB power. Oh, look at that. We can actually see the little hairs melting. Let's see if we can get it on camera. Little puffs of smoke. All right. So the USB will melt these fine little hairs on this um, um, wire. Now I stripped down. This wire is from a Shure um, Beta 98. 
8 cable, one of those thin cables, the older ones that go between the mic and the um, uh, power supply or the um, preamp, and it was the thinnest wire I could find. All right, let's go ahead and try the 9 volt battery for this. And that's just as exciting, if not more exciting. Oh yeah, it burns it. It burns these things like little sparklers. Poof, poof, poof. If we can get those in there. Can you see them burning? Shaving them all down. Cool. Um, Phantom power definitely loses and the 9 volt battery and USB power have got more juice. What happens if phantom power is hooked up incorrectly and correctly to a microphone? I've got a Beta 98 here. I mean, sorry, I've got a Beta 58 here. And let's go ahead and hook up phantom power correctly. So I'm going to hook the wires up the right way. And we're going to want to listen. And we don't hear anything. But if I wire this incorrectly so that pin two of the, so that the ground is connecting to pin two or three and phantom power 48 is connected to the other two. So ground is to pin two and um, the 48 pin two or three. So one of them are short of the ground. This would happen if you have pin two short of the ground or pin three short of the ground and phantom power turned on running into a microphone. And you should be able to hear that. That's the microphone capsule getting 48 volts across it. That's when the voltage is going across the diaphragm. That is not something we want to do. And we can hear what is happening there. What happens if the mic was cooked up across USB power? Now this is going to be something we don't normally do, but we can try it. And we can hear that too. And just for fun, what happens if we had a 9 volt battery hooked up across a Beta 58? I don't recommend doing this, but let's give it a shot. All right, about the same. I can hear that capsule slamming around in there. All good. Um, not too much different. Now, with that, they seem to be pretty similar. Uh, they were all kind of in the same volume. It was hard to tell, which is worse. Uh, finally, we've touched them all. What happens if we put them in our eye? No, I'm just kidding. Uh, what happens if we lick them? Um, so let's go ahead and start with USB power. And we'll give that a lick and I'll tell you what it feels like. Huh. I feel um, a little bit of um, yeah, electric taste, imagine that. And I can feel it going between the two terminals on my tongue. Um, not too bad, but definitely a flavor there. Kind of like biting into aluminum foil-ish, but a little different. I wouldn't want to touch that to my teeth. Um, let's go ahead and try the 9-volt battery. For this, I'm going to take the clip weeds off. Ah, that's got a little more bite to it. I feel my tongue contracting a little bit. Ooh, and the front of the tongue definitely is more sensitive than the back. But that's something I can deal with. So 5 volts, 9 volts. Let's go ahead and try this 48 volts. Now first, I'm going to lick across pin two and three. And just as expected, I have 48 volts on both. So there's no difference between them. I don't feel anything. But what happens if I lick them and then grab the ground? Ah, I can feel it. I can feel the electricity going through my body when I grab the ground and lick the two. Um, but that's not the real test. What happens if I 
lick all three and um, do the 48 volt tongue test. And um, I'm nervous. Oh boy, yes, that does have a sensation to it. I'll do it again with some reluctance. Okay, yes, and we won't do that a lot of times. Um, that definitely is a zap. My tongue felt a sharp pain. I could feel it contracting and it does wake me up. Um, so in summary of this adventure, which is more dangerous? 48 volt phantom power, five volt USB power, or a nine volt battery? Well, if you're a piece of wire, the nine volt battery wins and the five volt Phantom power, five volt USB power comes in second and the 48 volt is harmless. If you're a speaker, the 48 volt isn't gonna do much for you. The five volt will do a little or a good amount and the nine volt does more. If you're an LED, that nine volt will really light you up. And if you're a tongue, that 48 volt's gonna come out to bite you. Um, good stuff. Uh, and if you're a microphone, they're all about the same. Uh, we hear a crack. If you ever hear music coming out of a microphone, that's because it's hooked up to an output. Uh, they will make sound. I'll do that in another video. All right, fun stuff, and thanks for joining.